from Numbers chapter 11, selected verses out of that chapter, verses 1 through 10, verses 18 through 20, verses 31 through 35, just to kind of set, set the context of what's going on. about their hardship in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Mm -hmm. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. Mm -hmm. So that place was called Taborah because fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rabble with them began to crave other food and again the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we've lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. The manna was like coriander seed and looked like resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. Right. They cooked it in a pot or made it in a case and it tasted like something made with olive oil. All right. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Uh -huh. Moses heard the people of every family wailing, each at the entrance to his tent. Uh -huh. The Lord became exceedingly angry yes, and sir. Moses was troubled. Yes, Verses 18 through 20. Tell the people, mm -hmm. this is the Lord speaking, tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for the morrow mm -hmm. when you will eat meat. The Lord heard when you heard you when you waited. Mm -hmm. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Yeah, now the Lord will give you meat uh -huh. and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day or two days or yeah. five, ten or twenty days. But for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it because you've rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? Verses 31 through 35, last section. Now a wind went out from the Lord and drove quail in from the sea. It brought them down all around the camp to about three feet above the ground as far as a day's walk in any direction. All that day and night and all the next day, the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than 10 homers. Then they, then they spread them out all around the camp. While the meat was still between their teeth and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore, the place was called Kibroth Hatavah, because there they buried the people who had craved the other food. Yes, From Kibroth Hatzbah, the people traveled to Hezeroth mm -hmm. and stayed there. God bless his word. Right. For just a few minutes, I want to talk from this topic. Are you satisfied mm -hmm. with what God is doing for you? Are you satisfied? <laughs> with what God is doing for you. No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, God loves you. I'm, I'm going to shift gears on you today. I'll resume the I Am series next week. Today I'm going to talk from the general area of Thanksgiving. On this past Thanksgiving Day morning, I preached from the topic, Being Grateful in Tough Times. And I want to continue to talk about Thanksgiving in, in some manner today. We, we've received some troubling news in the last couple months. It's not just troubling, it's scary. And there's no need to pretend that we're not concerned. Because bad economic times do concern and affect us. But I want to use this passage today to help us to take a good look at what we have going for us in spite of 
the bad times. Even though it may be tough and it may get worse, God is still doing something on our behalf. How are we going to react and respond to God's positives on our behalf? Now, this text is not unfamiliar to us. I, I served several months or whatever it is. I, 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 I preached a sermon that was based on this text. But the text still holds some reminders that we need to be alerted to every now and then. The children of Israel, in this text, the children of Israel are on their way to the promised land. And it's only been a few days since they had left Mount Sinai where God had given his law. Moses is their leader, God is their provider and guide. In spite of all the things that they had going for them, they still found something to complain about. Sometimes, sometimes it does not matter how much God blesses us. We still seem to find a reason to find fault. And the question is, why is that? Why does it look like we seem to look for something to find fault with? But let me suggest something to you today. Many times we don't want God and God alone. Somebody missed that. Many times we don't want God and his supremacy. We don't want God and God alone. We want God and something else. We say to God, God, you alone are not enough for me. So, so we find it hard to be grateful. We find it hard to be satisfied with just him. We find ourselves complaining and wanting more, better, and different. Uh, have, have, have you see yourself in there anywhere or where you used to be or somebody that you know they already got something but they want some more they get some more but they want something better God is not pleased God is not pleased with our attitudes of discontentment with his provisions too many times too many times we see we hear too many of our Christian brothers and sisters down in the mouth disheartened, distressed, and discouraged over what they don't have. They spend too much time and energy murmuring and complaining about what they don't have as if God has forgotten them. As we look closely at the text, the children of Israel had yielded to an intense craving for something else besides God to make them happy. They became consumed with memories of meat and vegetables they had when they were in Egypt. The Bible, the Bible talks about an old nature and a new nature in the life of believers. The old nature is controlled by the flesh and it wants what it wants. It wants self. It wants sin. It wants satisfaction. But there's also a new nature that wants God and righteousness. So there's a battle going on inside every child of God. When we allow our minds and spirits to dwell on carnal desires and instant gratification yielding to sin only becomes a matter of time. Israel was in the wilderness, but God was providing them with manna and water every day. They were in a desolate place, but God was providing them with manna and water every day. Put a pen in that. After a while, they started remembering the fish, the fruit, and the vegetables they had in Egypt. God was providing what they needed for sustenance. God was providing what they needed to stay alive. They didn't have to work for their food. They just walked around and picked up the manna in the morning after it had fallen overnight. They didn't have to plow, they didn't have to plant water or work the ground. God just dropped the blessing into that camp. And all they had to do was just pick it up on a daily basis. It was a gracious gift from God. It had all the vitamins, all the nutrients for their 
survival and for a healthy existence. But listen to that 